Hello once again, and welcome back to another haphazard recording uh, produced for you exclusively at the Roadkill Cafe, where fresh off the grill means two different things, and we're located under the flight path of the Minneapolis-St. Paul Airport. And people have commented in the past, and thank you for your comments, because of the fact that I can see, and on a clear day, I can see forever. No, actually, according to the narrative of science, I can see 2.6 million light years away. And I'm sorry, that's the farthest object visible with the naked eye. Now, pardon me while I laugh. <laughs> okay, we're taught and we're trained and uh, we are indoctrinated uh, since we're very young to believe that we can see 2.6 what the hell was that? Million light years. Okay, well, I didn't know. I, I If I had known that, I would step out the door and, and watch my cousin in Nebraska mow their lawn. However, we know that, that, that it's not possible, uh, but let's take a look at this narrative. You can see about three miles out. Uh, six miles, the average 747 passenger plane flies at about 6.6 .6 miles up in the air. Curious, and eh? didn't know that and uh, 50 miles is your vision I suppose on a clear day city buildings can be seen from 50 miles away if you're standing on the ground if you're standing on the ground I thought it was six miles or three or well at any rate <laughs> okay let's just continue on I'm just showing you the evidence or I'm sorry the information that is the narrative and this upsets a lot of people believe it or not you start showing what is shown and what's the truth and why would you get upset uh, this is what's given I didn't write this I'm just looking at it and questioning how far we can really see or how far we're told we can see now you can see six miles if you look across the land all right but if you look up, you can see 2.6 million light years. Now, does that really seem to make sense to you? That's all I'm asking. I'll just go into images here and uh, ask that question. Oh, and, and give this consideration to believe that you can... I'm not saying... I'm just having you question it for yourself. And maybe it bothers you to question it. Well, we're told, and I can look through a microscope, and I can... Yeah, um, so what am I saying? Let's see. If you um, find yourself, or if you walk into a planetarium, all right, you walk into a planetarium, and you sit down on one of the seats in the planetarium, and you look up, and the person at the microphone says, uh, the stars that you're looking at are 850 miles away from you right now. You're going to absolutely know that that isn't true because you just walked into the planetarium. You know the ceiling is 40 miles, or <laughs> 40 feet, or 30 feet, or however many feet the ceiling is from you. So you definitively know that that is not true. <clears throat> However, when you step out into the night sky and you look up, uh, you are you have to believe what you're told. You don't you can't test to see the distances here. But you can see them all, so it is a confusing and curious detail in how far we can see. And I'm not here to confuse, but more to question the fact that you can see six miles across or 50 miles across the land, or if you're up in a plane, let's go 150 or 200 miles, you can see, uh, possibly depending on the atmosphere. But then when you look up, you can see 2.6 million light years. So, um, personally, I have the choice not to believe that. I don't know what the distance would be uh, to these, but I don't believe for one second that I can see uh, that far. Two million light years. And here, that's pretty little starburst. These starbursts, by the way, are the lens flares are made either by computer graphics or, um, you know, a, a lens that has a flare scratched into it. However, so they're fake is what I'm saying. Um, they, they aren't real lens flares and a lot of people look at them not being photographers believe that they are actually you know that way so right what we believe what we're taught what we're told and what we can actually prove and evidence for ourselves we can't go out into space we're not uh, but we're told we can 
And I should clarify that when I say we can't, I mean uh, I can't go out into, I mean, I can't just to go hop in my car and run over to a spaceship and go out into space right now. Uh, I don't know, maybe you can. Uh, however, when I say we can't, I mean we as a general uh, people. Now there's an organization that uh, puts out phone calls saying we just did it again kind of like Sputnik, and then we post that immediately on every news channel saying, hey, they just did it again, uh, which is true and factual. Uh, but So when I say we can't, I don't mean um, there aren't people that claim to be able to. I just mean that can you walk out your front door and go out into space? That's what I meant by when I said we can't. I mean, I, I personally can't go hop in a spaceship um, and go out. But maybe you can all right, that's what I meant. So just just to be clear about that, I told we can go, and I'm I'm personally I'm I'm buying a ticket. I'm gonna go take a ride on this thing. You know all those people that go riding around on this uh, just for shits and giggles and fun and the hubbly bubbly, which can't turn around and take a shot of our planet, but takes all these shots a hundred billion light years away, and uh, so this is not discounting. Um, science in itself it is questioning what you're able to view and that's what science is science isn't uh, being told what to think or how, you know science is being told how to think and how to how to check the the narratives how to check the actual facts and evidence for yourself how to look across the ocean and, and question how far is it from this little teeny sun to the left side of the frame how many miles is it just curiosity how many miles is it to the right side of the frame from the sun? Once again, just curiosity and also how far is it from where you're standing to the sun? Just a curiosity. These curiosities and questions can really upset people. <laughs> people that want to defend the narrative, people that are comfortable with the narrative. Um, that's their choice and prerogative. I am dealing with the deceptions and having people question the deceptions. And it is, it is beginning to bury me on YouTube. You see many of my videos going private or disappearing because of I'm looking at what's happening in the algorithms and saying, well, it's not worth losing my channel in the beginning. I'll release those again later on. So how far can you see? That's all I'm asking. I hope I didn't upset you too much. And let's get on to the next part. Now, I can't help but to focus on this in relation to what I was just talking about in how we see and what we see because of the fact that the misdirection in our society um, in dealing with the, this um, information that you see right in front of you right here and now how do I put this when you put this word into your uh, Google search entertainment is that right yeah entertainment yes uh, you will not get the definitive definition. You have to put in definition entertainment, and that still won't. That will still can you know give you confiscation. Now, now you might wonder why I have to put in. Oops, define entertainment. Define entertainment in order to actually get. And I still haven't received it. Uh, <clears throat> however. Entertainment is made up of three separate parts. You have enter, you have ment, and ment is mind like government. And tain means to hold. As you can see here, meaning hold. So enter and hold the mind is entertainment. Just wanted to interject that briefly and back to the essay the misdirection that you will get on certain issues and subjects that have to do with our conditioning will show a line of confiscation as what's popping up and, and happening here at this particular point in time. You go, well, those are just advertisements. Uh, once again, to notice what is actually happening here. Knowledge. And we put in a word into a knowledge engine. Wouldn't you first get what a definition was, do you have to actually put in define? 
<laughs> and so the assumption is pre-made for you. The direction is pre-set for you. And when you go into a movie channel, like say Netflix, for instance, your subject matter is pre-evidenced for you. It's just like when you go into your YouTube and you have the suggested uh, videos. And somebody like me in the beginning was really put up for suggested videos. Uh, but then later on, as I speak a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, how do you say, contrary to what the uh, controllers want you to say. And so that's what I just mentioned earlier. Entertainment is a four and a half times. Uh, if you go into the uh, different videos that have been put out in mind control and in overall conditioning, amusement, ceremony, religious festival, uh, there is a lot of curious information. We, we love to be entertained. That's why we're watching YouTube, is to be entertained and to get some knowledge, get some curiosity. Um, I, and it seems like I doubt all of the historical narratives. No, I don't. I question. I don't immediately doubt everything. I, I do approach it with cynicism and sarcasm, a lot of it. I am Greek, 50 full percent, you might say. My father was 100 percent Greek. And so maybe that makes a difference in my genetic structure to be that curious and questioning, or it could have been the abuse I suffered in uh, academic societies which I eventually proved out to be through testing and all this crap. So I'm letting you read through a little bit of this while I am speaking, and I am this way in my productions, and will not apologize for it. But a lot of people believe that this is where we are. We are stuck in a matrix of illusion, and uh, the religious also have the concept that we are in a fabricated universe whether it was God or whether it was an uh, artificial intelligence or a different life force or an alien uh, being, more beings um, that came and reproduced with the monkey people, Anunnaki, etc. Uh, we have a lot of diverging avenues to consider, and uh, many of us have rejected a lot of the what we consider to be stupid ones or preposterous or doesn't fit in with our ideas of what could possibly be. And especially when we're looking at all of the mud flood and the overtaking of empires and what time and narratives and years and questionable details and missing land masses, we have, we should question and, uh, you know, come to conclusions about things that we feel comfortable with. What is more comfortable, that we're being told the truth or that we're being lied to? And some people say that the first part is more comfortable and others the second because of all the evidence that we have been uh, misguided and misled and lied to. And then, of course, you have to wonder, why, well, why did you? Why did you? I've just caught you in this. Why, why did you do it? And you get nothing. You get blank. You get no response except for, you know, you're an idiot for questioning the scientific narrative. Well, does that make one an idiot? Really? All right. Well, you might want to check that mirror out because the narratives are to be questioned. That's what science is all about. It's not blindly believing whatever you're told. It just doesn't make a scientist. Well, then, of course, doubting everything you're told isn't, that goes the, the same, you know, just look at it. Look at it, first of all, and give it an honest look. So many people think that I have the narrative set up ahead of time, and then I just try to focus on the things that will verify what I have, my, you know, my pre-conclusion, and I actually don't do that. I try not to do that. So call me on it. If you see me, children, call me on it. So now I've let you read through a little bit of this as I have been narrating. And I hope that this uh, form of entertainment has made some form of sense to you. And you will often find or see, and I will too, in my, uh, after I view something, I will see uh, gaps or areas where I started saying something and didn't finish. And... Uh, I apologize for that. Call me on anything that I may have missed in my narrations, if you wish or will. Otherwise, I don't 
claim to be any extremely well-read individual. However, I have proven in my life many things that I am divulging over my YouTube, YouTube presentations. So it is good for us, in my opinion, to look into the past, to look at what was there in the past, and, uh, and consider the year that it was there, and what is being shown in the depictions that we can see. And uh, I, that's me. You know, I think that's important. I hope you do too. And this is a banquet hall in the palace of King Saleh Selassie, painted from a photo, Ethiopia, 1852. And as you can see, the curiosities in this piece. I hope that didn't upset you. And now on to the next piece. Wow. Oh. All right, this is a map of 15, what is it? 1532, uh, down here in the bottom, as you can see. And I uh, was looking into fashion, and I thought, what better place to find fashion than in ancient maps? And so I uh, rushed right in to check out this Nova et Negra Venercio Orbis Descriptio, uh, briefly. Uh, to notice the <laughs> curious vortex, if you see here, of course, you see on the left side the vortex and then the Terra Australis de Islandia. Uh, but you see the four areas up here of the, um, ah, the old land where everyone and giants came from and the vortex to the, I don't know. Anyway, I thought I'd show you that. It's curious, it's interesting, fascinating, Captain. And up here from the 1300s, right here, uh, and possibly one even earlier. And to look at these. So, we can identify Egypti Superior, right here. I'll zoom in a bit tighter and uh, wait a half an hour. All right, there we have Egypti Superior. So this is Egypt. And so uh, in relation to our surveys that we were just doing, we know this coastline. We know that um, out, um, I don't know, protrusion, you may say. Now, now that we have this in my system, I've got it out of my system, or actually in, uh, we can get a bet better look at it. So let me just go ahead and zoom in slightly. Get back to the ori Oh, covering themselves up. Bit of shame, bit of modesty. And somebody picking an apple, somebody shamed. Mesopotamia, right there. As we can hear a beautiful jet going over. Well, this is quite clear. Quite clear indeed. We have Egypt Superior. We have Judea, Palestinia. This is a fantastic 1300s map. I'm just going to have to give the cartographer of this map a great, great applause. A little piece of a video here. There. Wow. Because this is great. You've got Africa. You've got Libya. I mean, this is so definitive compared to maps that were made hundreds of years later that just didn't have this. Uh, they had just like, where? But this has so many definitive and, uh, I don't know, sorry, I don't mean to get too overly excited. Um, but now the, you know, islands that are located in here, I'm wondering if any of those are there. It just has Corsica right here. Um, so we will, I will be getting into that for now. I just want to continue. Do, do, do. Now we're going to hop into the Egyptian area and check out from Google Oit the Nile section of this. Sorry, I'm jumping personalities and accents, good man. You best quit that there, Sonny. Uh, Egypt and all of the islands that were depicted in the old map that we were just looking at. This one right here. As you can see, Egypt. I could give it the same or similar orientation. Might as well go to Google Oit and go ahead and do that. Pardon me for saying it that way. Uh, I can't even to the right side and, oh, that's curious, quite indeed. So let's go ahead and turn this 
to the maps orientation to the right side and then look there are a variety of islands you have Cyprus over here you have Crete down here and we have people who are are fairly narcissistic over here. Ego, ego, no, it's Egeo. Right, so there is a variety of islands here, and on the old 1300s map, we see uh, once again, sorry, the map just jumped on its own. Uh, Corsica and uh, Cyprus over here. It's Lucretia, and so on Google Earth, these things from the 1300s, there's Insula Lucretia. Right there, or Crete, as it were. So, very curious, looking at this. Uh, however, Crete is way up here, isn't it? It seems like it should be... It seems like it should be lower, uh, because they have Crete really directly out of the Nile. And in, in fact, they were off by slightly just a tad. See how far he was off. He has it right out of the Nile. So we could just go right off the Nile and uh, make a line here. He's only half by 400 miles. I mean, that's not that bad, I guess. Um, take another look at Egoia. Ego was down below here. So Crete was depicted as directly off of the Nile, but was really down here hundreds of miles lower. But this one is great because it's got these names, and even though they're not as definitive to me, like let's take a look at Corsica right here, for instance. I'll just pop over here and look at Corsica. Uh, there's a Cyprus way up there. <clears throat> So Corsica would be all right in this vicinity. Yeah, I would believe it is designated as a uh, upper island for right now, correct? Unless I miss my guess, it's right up there uh, just uh, below the Egyptian Nile tributary. But then Crecia is all right. We're missing a few islands here. Um, I don't want to be. Too conspiratorical. Let's get back over here and see what those islands may have been to this particular cartographer. Hmm. Well, it does seem to be rearranged from a 1300s map. Uh, but then again, you don't. I didn't have the uh, absolute description of the person that drew this map, or whether or not it was somebody's daughter, or it was done for a high school, or fifth grade project. All right, kids, we want you to draw a picture of the Earth as you know it. Now, one thing you may or may not have noticed is the tendrils that come out of the Egypt, um, the Nile, the Egyptian territory over here on the right. And you notice how if you were to extend these, they almost look like they would, uh, like they're, ex they're extensions from the Nile, then you have these tributaries over here that come into the land that almost appear as if they came, you know, you see that? Uh, from the Nile. And uh, now I'm going to zoom back a little bit and, and just consider that. You see, almost like if you just continued each tributary of the Nile that's shown here down to the other side, it matches up fairly interestingly. Now, if I were to go to Google Earth and take a look at that um, particular curiosity, then the tributaries coming from the Nile over here would extend out over to this side in inlets, as they say. Or as you know, if you see the what I'm getting at there, with that particular curiosity and how they on these rivers on the left side in this picture over here these rivers come in one two three four five different inlets right here and so just above those we have this very large city so to look at this area which is what it is on that map 
Uh, <clears throat> hmm. Well, I just found that to be quite curious and interesting. In that relationship in detail, um, I don't really see any major inlets here. Uh, not to say that this doesn't appear to be some form of possibly ancient river right here. And, uh, it may still be, possibly. It's just still a river running around this way. Well, it does not appear to be, actually. I'm getting close. Um, so anyway, that's what I was looking at in comparison to this 1300s map. A lot to consider to look at, and then the positioning of each detail, and who actually drew it. I'll leave the uh, link in my description, and you can go through the written information. As I already was as well, uh, this talks about uh, the teacher. Um, therefore, when one of my students said this map resembled navigation charts of the Middle Ages, I was for not, first not much interested. Fortunately for me, I kept my opinions to myself and encouraged the children, uh, students to begin an investigation along that line. We soon accumulated considerable information about medieval maps. Were we not concerned about the land maps? Exceedingly crude. So they, uh, yeah, selected specific maps, and uh, this was a teacher with his students. So there are a lot of other maps in this particular work that are quite interesting, curious, fascinating. And I'm getting a stick on my, <laughs> I don't know how to explain that. My uh, cursor is sticking to the page. Let's see. Well, that was our survey into essentially a, a, a fashion is all I wanted to see. And we got all that uh, Mount Mubiru and all of those uh, wild other ones. And this pieces, I mean, these pieces I can spend days on this particular one. I'll zoom in a little closer and take a look at the overall uh, work of this. This piece right here uh, is intense. I've gone through some of this. It is a map of 1335 and uh, one discovery of a 12 wind system in the Venetian map 1484 led us into etc. And so if I didn't, weren't getting that lock on, as you can see, the uh, angles that are drawn out here and the, you know, the pentagram uh, direction and then the wheel of numbers, or I'm sorry, the wheel of letters, and the fundamental symbology that uh, is so highly held. But now the map itself, I'm going to zoom in on this, see if it'll work is uh, nose to nose. This is Spain over here. This is Africa over here. And this is the Mediterranean in between them. You're looking at it upside down. Of course, this is Italy on your upper left. And uh, somebody has mentioned in the past of uh, the birds, the fish, the other images that are shown in this curious uh, piece. Then uh, you can see the name right there. I'm not going to delve into that. And the circular, again, uh, Psyopskaril, or whatever it says, um, to be quite curious. The winged animal with the horns, and uh, right. I wanted to show you that, just brief close up. I can uh, zoom back on it and download it, but this is really not, no. No, no, no. But this particular book. And when you look at Frisland, this is the land that disappeared. I mean, this book won't stop. I was just going to stop, and the book won't do it. It won't let me. <laughs> Frisland. I had to do it. I had to download Frisland. And uh, there it is, Frisland. And you have uh, Island A up here 
what? And anyway, this is Grunland up here. It's, yes. Hmm? And uh, let me just take a look at Google Earth. I'm getting all quite discombobulated at this particular juncture. <sighs> Frustrating. Uh, Iceland. This is. And when thine eyes get so, so black, I think you people smoking. Okay, well, here's Iceland, right? There we go. Icelandia. And then the Faroe Islands over here. And what's missing is uh, Frisland. And nice, as I mentioned, this is a Groenland, Greenland, or Greenland. Or uh, over there. Over there. And so now when you look at these islands, as you can see quite evidently and obviously, Frisland does not exist anymore. Uh, we just look at that on Google Earth again. Boink! And. Right. So your Iceland being here, Frisland here, and Grenland up here. Now let's just check the orientation of this. And. Uh, <laughs> there. So let's just do that. Whoops. It won't stay there. But it will stay there. So back to Google White and realigning these slightly to more of the you know, look of the angle if it will do it without jumping all over the place. Now you see the number of islands here of Greenland here and Iceland here. Not Groenland, it's Greenland. I want to talk about people's, I'd rather talk about their green. Now there is an island over here I mean, some greens are like hunter green and then mint green and, um, and farmer green. But I don't see... Okay, we got... Right, and so I'm just looking at these in comparison to the old map. And uh, it's no big deal. We've seen it and proven it before. So Greenland is up top. Iceland is right here. And down below Iceland is Frisland, which is missing. So I want to go diving. I want to go diving there, right about first land would be here. It's funny there isn't even a blob or some sort of, uh, you know, dead giveaway. I mean, how does a huge island like that disappear? And I go, well, it's those ones that are over there by Europe, you bonehead. Okay. So rather than being down here south, it's actually way over here where it's in, uh, well, Huh? I don't buy it. And Stottiland, what is that? On this map, a particular map, if I zap back a little bit. Stottiland isn't even... Right, so there seems to be, unless this is Stottiland over here, which is Newfoundland, a little blob down there, so now I expect to see some kind of blob down there with the first land. And what are these tire track looking things? What is that? Huh? Ah, ancient aliens. And you see these roads at right angles and directly. Uh, that's, well, according to my scientific narrative, there are no right angles in, in nature. Uh, maybe a few ex obscure right angles. And once again, the haphazard universe has drawn me down the rabbit hole. Alice. Well, I'm going to go ask Alice uh, when she's... 10 feet tall uh, but for now I wasn't really I didn't have any intention to and of and for and therefore and such as they say if you will indubitably so I just wanted to do that Icelandic comparison uh, maybe they had it wrong maybe they thought Iceland was up here and this is Frisland and uh, go smoke another one or or row 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 your boat all right, well, that was fun. I uh, had some curious, uh, interesting times in this particular essay. I uh, enjoyed downloading these maps and zooming in on the details and looking at all the missing cities on missing islands, or land masses, I should say. And have you consider, am I wrong? Or, you know, is that still there? And I'm just missing what uh, seems to be gone. All right. Look forward to your comments and my next production as it inspires me or comes to me in the future.
So help me out with a like, comment, or a subscription, especially subscription, and I will continue to make more curious and creative haphazard productions. All right, thanks for playing, and have a great day. Don't forget to share. Talk to you soon, hopefully. Thank you.